Welcome back. In this video, I'm going to introduce the concept of equidistance. And there are two different equidistance theorems that we will utilize throughout the course of the year. First, we're going to begin by defining a couple of things. First thing I want to take a look at is distance. You've heard the expression, the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. Well, that's what distance is. We're defining distance as the length of the shortest path joining two objects or points. And equidistance is exactly what it sounds. Equidistance or equal distance. If two points are the same distance or equal distance from a third point, they are said to be equidistant. So if we have two points, point A and point B, and we have a third point C, and the distance from A to C is the same as the distance from B to C, A and B are said to be equidistant from C. So A is equidistant from C and B is equidistant from C. Another thing we're going to define here is the perpendicular bisector. And we know what perpendicular is. Anything that's perpendicular, of course, forms right angles. So we know that perpendicular forms right angles. And a bisector, well, divide something into two congruent segments or angles. So in our case, a perpendicular bisector does both of those things. It is a line or a segment that is both perpendicular and bisects another segment. So looking above here, see how we do. If I have X and Y and P and Q, and if PQ is perpendicular to XY and XQ is congruent to XY, we would say that PQ is the perpendicular bisector of XY. PQ is imposing itself onto XY, onto the segment, in a unique way. It's both perpendicular and bisects it. So that's what's going on there. And we have a, a couple of ways to prove perpendicular bisector, but in this section, we're going to prove a perp perpendicular bisector by saying that if two points are each equidistant from the endpoints of some segment or of a segment, then those two points, when they're connected, will determine or form the perpendicular bisector of the segment. And this is going to be a reason and a proof. And yes, you are going to have to memorize it. There's no way to shorten that one. If two points are equidistant from the endpoints of a segment, then they, the two points, determine the perpendicular bisector of the segment. So if we have something like this, let's go A, B, C. And we've seen diagrams like this before. Okay. If we have... AB is congruent to AC, we'd say A is the same distance from B as it is from C. So A is equidistant from both B and C. Just like up here, we said C is equidistant from A as it is from B. So A is equidistant from B and C. And also, D is equidistant from B and C. A different distance, but D is equidistant from B as it is from C. So in this case, A and D are my two points that are equidistant from the endpoints of the segment, segment BC. So those two points, when they're connected, AD, when I've connected all the way through E, AD is going to form the perpendicular bisector of BC. And we've seen diagrams like this before. We might have something like this. Okay, looks kind of like a kite, doesn't it? So, we could have P and Q 
are the same distance, are equidistance from x and y. P is the same distance from x as it is from y. And Q, while a different distance, is equidistant from x and y. So then P and Q, when connected, would form the perpendicular bisector of x, y. And we could do the same thing here on this triangle. But now UH is congruent to HS and MU is congruent to MS. Now here, M and S would be our two points. Pardon me. Yeah, M and H. I beg your pardon. M and H would be our two points that are equidistant from the endpoints of our segment, and that would be segment US. So it can be different options, and we've seen these kind of diagrams before. So the temptation to prove a perpendicular bisector will be to try and prove the triangles congruent, or attempt to prove the triangles congruent, and you can do it that way. That's the long way, though. Um, or you can use our new reason. If two points are equidistant from the endpoints of a segment, M and H here in this third diagram, are equidistant from the endpoints of segment US, then those two points, M and H, will determine the perpendicular bisector of segment US, or of the segment. Now the converse is also true. In this case, instead of trying to prove a perpendicular site, bisector, we might give you that that ds is the perpendicular bisector of ha. Okay, so we know that this is the case, that ds is the perpendicular bisector of ha, but we can also prove then that any point I put on here, uh, x, say we can now prove that xh will be congruent to xa. Because if a point is on the perpendicular bisector, then it will form, then, pardon me, if a point is on the perpendicular bisector, then it is equal distance or equidistant from the endpoints of the segment. So we would know that XH is congruent to XA. And it doesn't really matter where I am on here. I can be here at P. I can be here at Z. I can be here at N. It doesn't matter. Any point that's on the perpendicular bisector will be equidistant from the endpoints of the segment. This one also you are going to have to memorize. Okay? This is going to be a reason and a proof. And there are no shortcuts for that one either. If a point is on the perpendicular bisector of a segment, then it's equidistant from the endpoints of the segment. So let's take a look at our sample problem. We're given that ray WZ is the perpendicular bisector of XY, and we want to prove that WXY is isosceles. We have probably done this proof already, or something very similar to it. Um, and we know a perpendicular bisector forms right angles, and we know it splits it into two congruent segments. But we want to avoid proving the triangles congruent here because we've got a perpendicular bisector. We should be thinking equidistance here. And we should know that any point on the perpendicular bisector is equidistant from the endpoints of a segment. Well, we should know right off the bat then that Wx is congruent to wy. And our reason is if a point is on the perpendicular bisector of a segment, then 
then it is equidistant from the endpoints of the segment. And spend some time memorizing this because this step is going to be worth more points on a test or quiz than it normally has been. Normally a step is worth just a couple of points and you memorize that. I'm going to give you some extra points for that. Well, now we have an isosceles triangle. Triangle WXY is isosceles. And the reason would be if two sides of a triangle are congruent, then our triangle is isosceles. So just a couple of steps. It's a lot quicker than proving the triangles congruent. It's a lot more efficient than proving the triangles congruent. And I will be looking for you to do these proofs now as efficiently as possible. So let's take a look at our second sample problem. We're given circle O and that AB is congruent to AC, and we want, now we want to prove something's a perpendicular bisector. So we're going to use equidistance here, obviously. Um, so let's take a look at this. Our circle O, let's go ahead and draw in a couple of radii to places that make sense. So I'm going to draw OC and OB, two points form a line, or in this case, a segment. And then, because they're radii, we know that OB is congruent to OC, so we got to write that in our proof. And radii of the same circle are congruent, or radii of a circle are congruent. And now I have my two points, believe it or not. I have point A, that's one point that's equidistant from the endpoints of BC. And I have the center of my circle, O, because OC is congruent to OB. I have my second point, so now I have my two points that are equidistant from the endpoints of the segment. So sure enough. AD or AO, AD is the perpendicular bisector of BC. And just like the other reason, this is going to be worth a few extra points because it's a little bit more to memorize. And that is um, if two points are equidistant from the endpoints of a segment, Those two points, they determine the perpendicular bisector of a segment. So, as I mentioned, this will be worth more points than your typical step in the proof because it is a little bit more difficult to memorize, but I think you'll get the hang of that, and we'll get some more practice on this when I see you in class.